Well, the moment has come. You guys have been hounding me for many years to ride a motor gearbox unit bike in proper winter conditions. So could this Simplon with a Pinion MGU be the answer that many of you are looking for? Uh, right, guys, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Um, is this a revolution? Is this the next big thing? Uh, I've literally just ridden this bike, and I have to say I am massively, massively impressed in terms of the, the smoothness of the shifting and the quietness. And the man responsible for bringing this bike to the woods is Scott Davidson from Love E-Bikes in Glasgow. Uh, Scott, we've if we have got a bit of previous. We right. actually randomly met during <laughs> lockdown, where we discussed uh, the state of the mountain bike industry. Yeah. Um, massive thanks for getting in touch with me that you got the bike in the country. You're welcome. Mike. Um, but you know what? We, we're going to be talking about the Pinion MG, and yeah, we're going to be talking yep. about the Gates Carbon Drive. But right. let's not forget that counts for nothing. You haven't got a good e-bike system. So yep. we've got the Simplon Rapcom P-Max. And uh, this bike comes in in 170, 160, but you can have a different option as well, can't you? Uh, you can get 150, 150 as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sizes? Uh, small, medium, large, extra large. Yeah. Yep. Full uh, size run. One question you guys will want to know is that the weight, this bike weighs in around about 23.8 kilos. Yeah. Remember that's with a uh, 720 watt hour battery. But Scott, the range you can get on these bikes, right? You can get one of these with a... 960. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also a range extender as well, uh, available with certain uh, shocks. Um, but a 960 battery. How far can that take us? <laughs> uh, we haven't actually tested uh, how long it will go for. But, uh, but more than that, it's like the possibility of the, you know, the 960 and the 720, like 1600 watt hours. That's a lot of fuel in the tank, isn't right. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how much need? Yeah, but folks, you guys are probably not uh, so interested in about the range or the travel. You want to know just how this Pinion MGU operates out on the trail and in the muck. And the, and, the, and the rocks and the roots and the dirt and everything. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Right, Scott, let's get things rolling. Now, Deep Mud doesn't do so well on cassettes and derailers. No, not really. So I'm yeah. really interested to see how we get on right. in these conditions with a carbon drive. Uh, so it works, there's no jumping gears, right? very smooth. So my first impressions, oh sorry, second impressions are very favorable. Let's go and do some, uh, some climbing. Let's do that. So I've now just jumped onto Scott's 940 watt hour bike in size large, just to get a comparison of sizing. But what I really want to try out is the shifting under load. So I want to go down into third. And I'm gonna go up into second. Wow, that was smooth. And it's actually really quite reassuring that, that front end comes up as well. Okay, guys, what about the power on tap? And third gear and flex into fly. Apparently I can hold this button here and it gives me, well, there you go, you can see the arrow coming up. Gives me maximum power. I think it's 600 watts. So that's gonna become really useful. So the sections like this, which are deep mud where you're gonna power through them to keep your momentum. Back into fly mode. Fly mode probably extreme. I think flex and flow is just right for me. It's 95 kilos. Okay, folks, just gonna introduce you to the controls on the front of the bike. Um, with the modes here, eco, flow, flex, and fly. And on the right-hand side, we've got uh, the gears. This particular bike is a 12-speed. What I really like, if I just show you this here, you can actually select your gears. You can hear it switching between the gears there. Whilst you're stationary, really like that. So I'm now in seventh. Let's go back up into, say, second gear. And hopefully, yeah, there we go. Away we go. So I'm now in flex mode. And the height of the seat. I really like the, 
the gear shifting on this bike. Really great feel about it. Also like the feel of the bike, the shape of the bike too. Right, Scott, love e-bikes. I love this e-bike. Um, I've got to say, when I rode the bike in the car park in Munich, I did find some clunks between, I think it was fourth and fifth and was it eighth and ninth, but I've come up there now and it is super smooth. Right. It, yeah. is, it, is, it is way better than my previous experience. And of course, we're in a, in a more intense situation here. Yeah. Um, but my question, I think, or th the things we need to talk about is why would you actually want a combined motor gearbox unit rather than a traditional cassette and derailleur? I mean, for me, I think visually for starters, yeah. it just looks so much cleaner, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's super clean. But what a practical level though, what about, I guess maintenance we're talking about, right? You know, for so how long does a chain last on a regular uh, e-bike, EMTB? Five, six, seven hundred miles tops, having to change that uh, cassette as well. If you're a bigger guy or go, or go through chains and uh, cassettes quickly, then this belt should be lasting anything between five, I reckon, and eight thousand miles. Oh, oh. Five to eight thousand miles. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. You know, whereas, whereas, so how many chains and cassettes, uh, stroke derailleurs? Yeah. Are we going to have to replace in that time yeah. frame? Yeah. I mean, I mean, folks. Owen did actually did a video on the channel a few weeks ago where he looked at the actual the costs of of running an e-mountain bike, and he actually took my Canyon Strive as an example, and to replace the transmission cassette and derailleur, I think it's like four hundred and fifty euros cassette, four hundred for the derailleur. So you're looking at plus a chain, around about a thousand euros per per sitting. And of course this all depends on the, you know, the environment you're riding, your weight and and such things as that. But 8,000 mile, 8,000 K is pretty so, good. You know, so um, uh, Gates claim it's 30,000 K on a non e-bike. Um, but, you know, in my experience, having uh, ridden belts now for six years, yeah. uh, we've got customers up at eight, 9,000 miles. Granted, not mountain bikes. You know, these are kind of, uh, uh, city touring bikes, not so much mud packed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it changes uh, the unsprung weight as well on the back wheel. Yeah. But we're just, and we're keeping the, the, the weight and all the center of the gravity is right below us, be you know, so. Be before we talk about the weight in the middle of the bike, which, I, which I'm really into, yep. we haven't talked about the service interval on that pinion E112. Right. Uh, this is the latest version of the, yep. of the, of the MGU. Yep. Service intervals on that motor. 10,000 K. Right. Or every year, they say, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so and there's, there's, you, you, can, you have to lube this motor as well, right? Yeah, so you, it's, a, it's an oil change essentially, and they've made it so that the consumer can do it. Yeah. yeah. And they say it takes 10 minutes. Yeah. Much like, uh, you know, another, uh, yeah, roller, for instance, that, that also has oil that needs to be changed. So, but 10,000K. Wow, that's every, impressive. Yeah. Righty, next on my list of things to do on the Simplon is a sound check. This is purely a downhill run. It's quite rooty. Plenty of potential for noise on this. I better shut up. Wow, okay. Okay. That was possibly one of the quietest runs I've done on the EMTB, once I shut up, that was of course. Um, no rattle at all from this system. Uh, that's very cool. Okay, we've talked about wear rate replacement costs, we've talked about the aesthetic. Um, I guess there's a, a weight issue as well. Now, I think a transmission derailleur is around about 450 grams, cassette about 400 grams for the you know, top end version. So you know, it's headed on a kilo in weight there, which is taken off the back of the bike. But I like the fact that the motor, now the, this MG is 4.1 kilos. Yeah. So that, what I'm comparing now is that, that, that compared to my, my strive over there. I think that the CX race motor is 2.8 kilos. Yeah. You ride in a kilo onto the back and it's, it's so you, you, it kind of balances it's, out, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure, it's, it's there or thereabouts, yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> sorry about the face. Uh, I'm actually gonna now try shifting under extreme load. Um, Joey, can you turn that bike off, please? 
or at least I oh, don't turn it off, just don't paddle it. I'm gonna Hello. try to, I'm gonna try to tow you basically and change gear. So if you hold on to my bag, hope you can see, I mean, second gear. You yep. ready, Joey? Yep. Okay, here we go, second gear. We've got Joey at what? 120 kilos, Joey? Yeah, Okay, we're going uphill. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Oh my God, seventh, eighth. That is literally, it feels actually smoother under load. Wow, that's amazing. Now I've ridden up the hill and tried the four modes and the boost mode uh, in manual, whereas Scott says that there's actually uh, an automatic electronic shifting feature on this bike. Yeah, sure. So, so how does that work? So we just go in to the controller here yeah. and then we've got smart. Not, not in German on this occasion. Right, uh, we've got smart shift down here. Okay, so we've got start select. Okay, so this is to uh, select a gear to basically start off. You, you stop somewhere, yeah. you go back down the gears. Yeah. But then we've also And that got... does it automatically for you? Yeah, sure. Okay, right. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then we've got uh, pre-select as well. Uh, and this is the automatic mode. Yep. Uh, and it will just uh, change as and when uh, you want it to. And what's this here? What's the so cadence that's your, that's, your, that's your cadence. So yeah. you can change, obviously, how how it changes under load, uh, what what kind of shifting, how you ride. Yeah. Everyone's riding is different, you know, and uh, I said I, I ride a slightly lower cadence than my buddy, so I would set that to a slightly lower. Yeah. And then uh, off we go. Yeah. No gear is needed. So Scott, it really does seem like it encompasses everything, this drive unit. Um, so to talk quickly about the drive unit, it's 85 newton meters, 600 watts peak power, uh, and what, um, simple on say is a wear free motor and electronic gear shifting into one. Now this is the kind of scenario where I think the pinion will be an advantage. I've descended a tech terrain, I've now got to grab a load of numbers of gears. There's no chance I could do that on a traditional setup. Now in first gear, wow, and that just enables you to continue the flow on your ride. I just love it. I'm gonna tell you guys this, I was basically riding a mountain bike this morning and I thought it was fun, it was lively, but nothing, nothing surpasses the feeling of riding a mountain bike down the hill with no rattly chain, no noise from the, from the drivetrain or the motor or the, the cables within the down tube. This bike is as quiet and as stealth as it gets. And the great thing about that you get to tune into the, the sound of the tire, the grip that you're getting, the way you can pump the terrain. So for me, and as much as we talk about the gear shifting and the lack of maintenance, that is the number one benefit from riding the Simple on Rapcon. Uh, well, I'm actually sweating from having so much fun, uh, which is crazy really. Uh, Scott from Love E-Bikes in Glasgow, thank you so, so much for introducing us to this system. You're welcome. Uh, I want to have a very frank conversation with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the gear shifting was very different to when I rode it in Munich. If I went looking for it, if I was really looking for it, I probably could feel a difference between fourth and fifth and eighth and ninth. Yeah, yeah. But like not to the extent which some people have commented on. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it affects the ride. I think its ability in technical terrain is fantastic. It's smooth shifting. Um, look, we chucked some mud in the system. Yeah. Probably an extreme version. I, I wouldn't go yeah. encouraging people to do that. Probably not, no. <laughs> No. You know, the same way as you wouldn't do that to a, uh, you know, to a <coughs> derailleur and a cassette. Yeah. Um, well, okay, let, for me, the, let's, let's look for five takeaways. I think aesthetically. Yeah, super, tech, super clean. Yeah. Yep. Uh, in terms of a low, you know, not zero maintenance, but low, low maintenance, maintenance and lower cost. Tick. That is a tick. Yeah. Um, I think the fact you, <laughs> or at least I don't have to set up any gears. Right. That's a tick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you think of any more? Uh, you know, you've got the pre-select. Uh, pre-select, yeah, the pre-select was which, fantastic, Which is great, actually. so when you're going downhill, it will automatically choose the gear so that when you start pedaling, 
you should be in the right gear. Yeah. yeah. I think I think the automatic shifting, I, I prefer using the manual shift, and I think what sure. we haven't sp spoken about is the actual, the controls are designed by Fit E-Bike Systems Correct. Yep. from Switzerland. Yep. Those guys have been in the business since e-mountain biking began. Yep. Yep. You know, Evie and his team, they know their stuff. Sure. And I think they've put a great system together there. But you know what, Scott? For me, it was the, the, the silence. Yeah, man, it's quiet. And I think you talk about the shifting and the aesthetics and all the maintenance stuff. I think the silence trumps everything because it really, really does add to your enjoyment on the hill. And when you're riding an yeah. e-bike and you're doing loads and loads of runs, for me, honestly, that was so close to my heart because like the last time I got anywhere close to that was actually on this hill when I did, I rode an Aaron Gwynn replica bike with no chain. That's right. the closest I've got to it. <laughs> But honestly, Scott, thanks so much. Uh, folks, uh, any questions, ask us both. Scott at eBikes in Glasgow. Uh, I'll leave the link down below. I, I do believe this is the only bike in the UK at the moment. Obviously, different parts of the world, there will be different availability. Please, please get yourself a ride on one because it is, is it revolutionary? I think in some regards it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think you need to, as a rider, experience it. I, I did mention in my, in my Go, GoPro clips, I do not think that the 9, 960, what are battery, right? Yep. I don't think the, there's a huge difference in the, in the dynamic ride between the 960 and the 720. Yes, there is a difference, but I think, we haven't talked about the suspension design on this bike. It's really lively. Yeah. The shape is great. Me at yeah. six foot, I'd probably go for the extra large at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry if I rattle on too much. I'm just really excited and I'm sweating and it's the end of the day and I've had a great time. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.